In question, the first uh, part of the question states, uh, you have to define what Kirchhoff's first law is. So the law is defined as the sum of currents into a junction equals the sum of currents out of a junction. Now this uh, basically means that if there is a node where all three wires, three wires, three random wires are connecting to that particular node, and there is current flowing into the node, and there are two currents that are flowing out of the node, then the sum of currents going into this junction, which is I1, should be equal to the sum of currents that are, that, uh, are coming out of the junction, which, is, which means that I1 would be equal to, it's going to be equal to I2 plus I3. It's going to be equal to the sum of currents that are coming out of the junction. Uh, the question states that Kirchhoff's first law is linked to the conservation of a certain quantity. State this quantity. So uh, it is related to the conservation of the certain quantity. Is uh, When you talk about this certain quantity, we basically mean uh, it basically means charge it's charge that needs to be uh, conserved so the amount of charge that's flowing into a node and the amount of charge that's leaving out of the node that should be equal so current going in and current coming out they must be equal current is the rate of flow of charge or the amount of charge that flows per second so it's uh, the conservation of charge that we are talking about when we talk about Kirchhoff's first law in the next part of the question, the, a battery of electromotive force uh, EMF 8 volts, so that's 8 volts. And internal resistance is 2 ohm is connected to a resistor X and a wire Y as shown in figure 6.1. So there is a resistor, uh, uh, 15 ohm resistor is placed over here and in parallel there is a wire X uh, which has resistance R Y. And the current is shown, it's, uh, the current uh, is, that's going through this wire is 2.5 amperes. Now moving to the next part of the question, uh, the next part of the question states, the resistance of X is 15 ohms, the resistance of Y is RY, the current in the battery is 2.5 amperes. You're asked, calculate the thermal energy dissipated in the battery in a time of 5 minutes. Now he's talking about inside the battery, there is this resistance too. We know that power, if I try to solve this, the thermal energy that is dissipated, remember that uh, thermal energy is is uh, work done work done is power into time so power into time the formula of power is i square r multiply that by time which over here is five minutes which is five into 60 seconds so we need to calculate power into time uh, the current is 2.5 amperes so that's uh, we're going to use that current so the current is 2.5 amperes, it's I square R or 2.5 squared multiplied by the internal resistance of the battery which is 2 ohms multiplied by the time it takes 5 into 60 seconds. So this would be the total energy that is dissipated in 5 minutes. And this uh, value comes out to be equal to 3800 joules. So uh, you can do this calculation on your calculator, the value, the answer comes out to be equal to 3800. Over here, 8 volts, the battery is providing 8 volts. And what we can do is, there is this internal resistance over here. There would be some voltage drop, some energy that would be dissipated by this 2 ohm resistor. So we know that the current that is passing through this battery, this current is going through this uh, 2 ohm resistor. So V is equal to IR. So the voltage of this uh, resistor, internal resistance, is, is going to be the V is equal to IR, which means that it's going to be current. 2.5 multiplied by the resistance, which is 2 ohms, so it's going to be 5 volts. So that means if the EMF or the voltage that is provided by the battery is 8 volts and there's a 5 volt drop on this resistance, so the net resulting voltage that would appear on the terminals of this battery. So let's assume that these are the terminals of the battery. Uh, so EMF is 8 volts and the voltage drop on the internal resistance So the voltage 
on the internal resistance is 5 volts. So your net output voltage is going to be, if you solve this, it's going to come out to be equal to 3 volts. So this is the voltage that the external circuit is going to see. On the terminal, it's going to be 3 volts. So let's uh, answer that, the terminal potential difference. So it's going to be 8 minus 3 volts, which comes out to be equal to 8 minus 5 volts, actually. And this comes out to be equal to 3 volts. Why now? So this dis uh, resistance Ry needs to be determined and uh, let's go back to our diagram first. Now one thing that we have figured out so far is that the terminal uh, voltage is 3 volts. Which means that since uh, these two resistances they are in parallel which means in parallel the voltages are the same. So 3 volts resistance would be on this uh, resistance and 3 volts resistance would also appear on this resistance. What I can do over here is, uh, if I look over here, what I can do is, I know the resistance and I know the voltage. So I can figure out the current in this resistor. So current I is going to come out to be equal to, it's going to be, uh, since V is equal to IR, I would be equal to V, which is 3 volts, divided by R, which is 15 ohms. And the current comes out to be equal to 0 0.2 uh, amperes, which now means that this uh, this wire over here, this particular parallel circuit over here is providing a 0.2 ampere current is going through it. Uh, and I can now figure out the current that is passing through this wire over here. Uh, the way I can do that is that I can apply Kirchhoff's law that since the total current that's uh, coming out is 2.5 amperes, which means 2.5 amperes current is going to be the sum of the 0.2 ampere current and this current uh, let's call this current x so 2.5 ampere current is equal to 0.2 ampere current plus the current x which is going through this resistor r y uh, solving this i'm going to get x as equal to 2.3 amperes which means that 2.3 amperes current is passing through this uh, wire R, which whose resistance is Ry. Now finally I have the current that's passing through this wire and I have the voltage of this wire as well. So again I'm going to apply V is equal to IR. Uh, the voltage is 3 volts and the current is uh, now 2.3 amperes. Uh, so V is equal to I into R. The resistance is Ry. So for this Ry, I can apply V0 to IR and I'm going to get my answer which is uh, making Ry the subject of the equation and solving it's going to be 3 divided by 2.3 amperes and my answer is going to come out to be equal to 1 point, my answer is coming out to be 1.3 ohms. So the resistance Ry would be equal to 1.3 ohms. So what I can do now is I can... Uh, uh, paste this working over here. I can take this working from this uh, point and I can paste it as a solution uh, in my answer. So here I've pasted the solution and the answer comes out to be equal to 1.3 ohms. Now moving to the next part of the question. Uh, the next part of the question states that you have a new wire Z has the same length but less resistance than Y. Uh, state two possible differences between wire Z and wire Y that would separately cause wire Z to have less resistance than wire Y. Now for a wire, uh, the relationship that determines the resistance of a wire is first the resistivity. So what you can do is, uh, this term over here is uh, called resistivity. So the first difference you can have is uh, you can have a different material, make the wire of a different material. So you can use a, uh, a different material with a different resistivity. So each material has a different resistance. Mm -hmm. It offers a different resistance. So the resistance of a particular wire depends on the resistivity of that material plus it's directly proportional to the uh, length 
and inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. So the bigger the cross-sectional area, which means the thicker the wire, the resistance would decrease. So state two possible. Now, now the problem is uh, you're using the same length, so length would not be a factor. So it's either resistivity or you change the cross-sectional area. So the second difference would be the cross-sectional area. And you can also mention that resistance is proportional to 1 over 1 over A. In the next part of the question, you have uh, uh, part 2, you're given wire Y is now replaced in the circuit by wire Z by considering the current in the battery. State explain the effect of changing the wires on the total power produced by the battery. Now I've gone back to the circuit and uh, the wire Y is now replaced by another wire which is called Z. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and remember Z had a smaller resistance, so let's uh, make this a smaller resistance. Let's see what happens, because we don't need to do any calculations specifically. Let's make this a 1 ohm resistance, so I've decreased the resistance. Now, if I decrease the resistance of this wire, the currents in the entire circuit, they are going to decrease. Remember, these two resistances are in, pa in parallel. So previously, uh, previously the, the resistances that were in parallel they were there was a 15 ohm resistance so I, i'm going to use the uh, relationship with the total net resistance in a circuit that's that's in that's in parallel these two resistances are in parallel so 1 over r is equal to 1 over r1 which is this resistor over here plus 1 over r2 r previously the resistance was 1.3 ohms so this is the total resistance that's being offered. If you try to solve this, it's going to come out to be equal to, uh, this would be equal to 1.3 plus 15 divided by 15 into 1.3. And uh, if you make R the subject of the equation, then this would become minus one. So let's try and solve this first. And the answer that I'm getting is point, uh, a36 ohms now what I'm going to do is what I've done is actually I'm going to res uh, decrease the resistance so let's assume that it was 1.3 ohms initially now it's 1 ohm so what would happen if I change the resistance of one of the resistors um, now it's 1 ohm so this has been replaced by 1 ohm so this entire formula would become uh, 1 plus 15 uh, into 1 which would be 15 over 15 which would be 1 ohm uh, so my resistance, total resistance would actually increase. If I decrease the resistance of wire Y, if I decrease the resistance of wire Y, uh, the total resistance that the circuit is seeing is going to decrease. It's, it's, it's going to increase. Initially it was 0.836 ohms, now it's 1 ohm. So I just changed 1.3 ohms to 1 ohms, just to see what would happen. So if the total external resistance is going to increase, it's becoming 1 ohm. Now resistance is proportional to current v is equal to y resistance is proportional to current assuming that you keep the voltage the same so since resistance is proportional to current if resistance increases then the current uh, would also increase and the power output uh, power depends on uh, power is basically current into voltage so since you have the same voltage the emf is the same so power would increase as well so going back to our, uh, our question, what's happening? Uh, external resistance. So the net external resistance of the parallel, net external resistance would increase. And if that would increase, uh, current is proportional to resistance. Since, vo since voltage is constant, EMF is constant, current is proportional resistance. So I would increase. And since power is current into voltage, voltage is the same, current is increasing. So P increases. Or the output of the power output would increase.